A couple months ago, I did one of these live events and I ran over to my neighborhood dollar store and just randomly picked up things that I would need to grab for helping picky eaters learn to love food. I had no idea what would be in there on that particular day, but man, is that place a treasure trove of fun things and so inexpensive. So I did the same just a few minutes ago. I ran over to my dollar store. Look, here's my bag to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> and I have just thrown a bunch of things here on my desk and I want to give you some fun tips about ways that you can help your picky eater as well. So before we get started though, I want to make sure that everybody knows that I'm giving away a copy of my brand new book, Adventures in Veggie Land. So I'm going to put in the comments exactly how you can win it. And one of the ways that you can win it is by asking a question about your picky eater. Because as soon as, as soon as I'm done here, I'm grabbing my comment for you. Um, as soon as I'm done here, I am going to be answering your questions. So I'm going to put ask your questions now and then comment and you'll be entered to win a copy of my new book. Awesome. <laughs> Stacy, thanks for letting me know you can hear me. This microphone is working. That's awesome. Yay. All right, my friends, are you ready to get started? Well, we're going to talk about dollar store hacks for your picky eater. And I had promised that we do at least five different hacks, but I want to give you a number six right away because we were just talking about adventures in veggie land, right? Well, you know what? It is getting warm outside. And so I wanted to make sure that everybody knew about this cool recipe that Chase Bailey did for my cookbook. If you don't know Chase, he's a young teenager with autism who was once an extreme picky eater, but he got into watching the Food Network shows and he's now been on numerous cooking shows and he was kind enough to include and create actually a special recipe just for my book, Adventures in Veggie Land. And these Chase Your Dreams ice pops have a whole cup of broccoli in them. So do you see this little cutie patootie in the book? You can see she's got some um, popsicle molds there. Well, sure enough, that's what I found over at the dollar store today. They've got them in time just for the popsicle season. And they've got these cute ones that have a little straw on the end so that when you fill them up and you make your broccoli popsicles, your ice pops, and you're holding them, if they start to melt, they can just sip through here as well. Isn't that fun? So I wanted to let you know those are there for any kid. But now let's specifically talk about fun hacks for picky eaters. Where we're gonna start is with chewing skills. On my YouTube channel, I have a video on how to teach a child to chew gum. And I typically do that for children who are three years and up, just because it can be a choking hazard. So we do want to wait till they're at least age three. But when I was over at the dollar store today, they had double bubble. I love to use bubble gum and the kids might want to just brush their teeth after because they do have a lot of sugar. But the reason why I like um, double bubble or even bazooka is because it really makes the kids work for it and works all their muscles in their jaw. And then likewise, um, it's sweet, it's fun, but you can also go through a lot of pieces of gum as you're teaching them the process. So when we're all done here, I'll be sure on my YouTube channel to put the video up in this corner so that you can teach a child how to chew gum. Don't miss the free download of The Food Goes Marching one of the songs from my children's CD, Dancing in the Kitchen. You can download that for free. And I use that song to help kids learn to chew gum. All right, so that's number one. Number two, let's talk a little bit about cooking. You hear me talk about cooking and the importance of it all the time, especially when it comes to our more hesitant eaters. But just for a dollar, they had these little mise en place bowls you know, where you can put all the ingredients to your recipe and then the kids can dump them in. Now, why do I care so much about these? Well, first of all, because 
if the kids can only spend a little bit of time in the kitchen with you, you know, maybe their attention span is a little bit short, et cetera, you might as well get them used to all the ingredients that are gonna go into the recipe by helping to assemble the little mise en place bowls. And over at the dollar store, you get five of these for a buck. Plus, these little bowls are perfect for Hesitant eaters to go on their plate for just a small sample of whatever you are cooking. It makes it look underwhelming. And it also gives them something when they go to fork, they have a little bit of an edge to, um, to fork that parsnip macaroni and cheese or whatever you're happen, happening to uh, be making. So I love these little bowls. And you know what? They're so inexpensive. If you break one, it's no big deal, right? Right. Okay, let's see. Our next one is, let's talk about plating. We just talked a little bit about cooking, right? One of the things that hesitant eaters, that, that really benefits them, is if they're able to help plate the platters for family style serving or even pre-plate the plates themselves. So when you're creating a platter, and maybe the kids aren't necessarily ready to try that fancy pasta dish that you made together, but maybe they'll take a little bit of arugula and just decorate the edge of the plaster of the platter of pasta. That's hard to say of the platter of pasta. Well, check this out. In the craft section, they had for a dollar these little chalkboard wooden stakes. So what the kids can do. With chalk, they can write on their arugula, or um, maybe you make parsnip mac and cheese, and they can write parsnips, and then stick it in the mac and cheese. When they bring it to the table, everybody can comment about, oh my goodness, this is so cute. Who made these little signs? Now the kids are getting a little ownership and a little praise, not necessarily for taking a bite, because sometimes that's just too much for a kid, but just for being part of the process. Plus, it's not about sneaking in vegetables, it's about announcing, hey, we got parsnips here tonight, and making it special. So I like these, these are fun. And you can just wipe them off and use them again. My other find at the dollar store today is something I use a lot in preschool classrooms, but you can also do it at the dinner table, lunchtime table, breakfast, whatever. And it's a little two minute timer. So let me show you. They had them in all different colors. They were a buck each. And look, everybody's seen these before, right? So there goes the sand and it is gonna mark exactly two minutes. So how do I use this? I use it for what I call the quiet Two, if you notice that your kids aren't eating and they're just chatting away, and I love kids to have good conversation, but they also have to get in some good nutrition. All you do is pull out your timer and you can even give it to your picky eater to be in charge of and say, hey guys, it's time for the quiet too. And you turn it over. And just while the sand is going through the timer, no talking, just eating. It's only two minutes, but you'd be surprised how many kids will get in a bunch more bites in those two minutes. So I use this a lot when I go to help out in preschool classrooms. And you know, the kids in there, they're so cute, but they get really, really chatty. And the teacher will often use uh, a timer on each table and say, okay guys, quiet too. That means no talking, just eating. And then the kids can all do that for the good 20 to 25 minutes that they have to eat. So actually, you could do two, maybe even three quiet twos if you were concerned that the classroom was too busy chatting and not getting enough eating in, but they'd still have more than enough time to visit with their friends. The other tip I wanna show you is they have this this self-adherent wrap. You guys have seen this before. You know, when you go to get your blood drawn, they always put a little cotton ball on your arm and they wrap it up with this wrap that sticks to itself, right? Well, why do I care about this? I really encourage the parents that I work with to carry this in their diaper bag and their purse, wherever they happen to go with their hesitant eater. Because when you're out at a restaurant, a lot of times, 
the drinks, the cups, the utensils that they bring to the kids, they're too big for the kids' little hands. But if you have some of this, you can actually wrap it around the cup. You can wrap it around the handle of the spoon. You can use it to offer a little bit more security even underneath the cup, you know, create a little coaster. It'll stick right to the table and then the, the, the cup itself can go right on top of that. But I mostly use it for wrapping so the kids have a little bit more grip on that restaurant cup or that restaurant utensil. And it weighs nothing, so easy to throw in your purse. And then finally, along those same lines, foam hair rollers. Not for what you think, but so that kids can have a little extra grip, grip. If you happen to be out and about and they're using a restaurant utensil, or maybe you just forgot to bring their toddler spoon, whatever it happens to be, you can Take just the spongy part, look, weighs nothing, so easy to throw in your purse and just keep it there. And then if they have a little plastic fork wherever you happen to be going, or the metal utensil at the restaurant, it'll slip right onto there and now the kids can get a grip. Why is that so important at a restaurant? Because you don't want the kids accidentally tossing a fork on the floor and having to wait for a waitress to come and show up for another one only to have it tossed again. Kids get frustrated with that, especially our hesitant eaters. And if they can get a good grip and really learn to fork, scoop, spoon, whatever it happens to be, their frustration goes down and they become more confident about what they're eating. So those are all my tips from the dollar store. I hope you like them. So one of my favorite things to do is to run over there and just see what I can find. And if you've got ideas about the dollar store, put them in the comments too. I'd love to know.